Ho, 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 happy holidays. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dill, presented by TheGamingGang.com. I uh, had to move my mic over a little bit. <laughs> I forgot I had <laughs> kind of moved it over the other way when I was shooting some video over at the other camera. Anyway, welcome aboard. Tonight is Thursday, December 19th. This is episode 400 and... 14 of the daily Dell. this is the first time you've swung in to check out the show keep in mind this is very very casual this is a live stream and i mainly talk about tabletop gaming news get a bit of chat going with some folks who watch live and that's about it i mean nothing too crazy so do you want to also point out if you like this video please give it a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel if you do. Don't forget, ring that little bell because it will not only notify you when this stream goes live, it'll also tell you when my standalone videos get uploaded, such as my first looks and page throughs and unboxings and reviews and interviews and convention coverage and you name it, you will be notified of it. Of course, if you are watching live on YouTube, there is chat available, so feel free to chime in. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay, but I do pay attention. So if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question or a comment, by all means, fire away. I will respond. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, please visit thegaminggang.com. For all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Be sure to tell a friend, tell two friends. So we've got Doug Roberts and Dan from No Enemies here in chat already. So uh, Dan says he's watching goat cheese, veggie, shrimp, and aspic recipe. All right. Okay. So he's... uh. He's paying attention to this show and he's watching uh, cooking recipes on uh, on another screen or a split screen in it. What have you? Anyway, so welcome aboard, everybody. It's going to be kind of a quick show tonight. Uh, I do have a good amount of news, but uh, kind of uh, not super in-depth stuff for some strange reason. I got a, a couple of things from the mailbag I'm going to talk about after the news as well. I do want to point out, no show tomorrow. That's right. There will be no show or Friday, December 20th, I'm going to see Star Wars. And yes, I know people are kind of down on it right now. There's a movie they're even more down on. Talk about that after the news too. But uh, I still got to go see it. And of course, got to see it in a theater. Got to see it on a big screen. All right, so let's jump on into the news because first off, Wizards of the Coast is going to be releasing new Challenger decks coming in April. I've got the dope. Forged out of proven, powerful strategies and standard, Challenger decks are perfect starting points for anyone wanting to jump into events at their local game store. And Wizards of the Coast is releasing another set of four in 2020. For the uninitiated, Challenger decks are individual 75 card decks geared towards standard play for the Friday Night Magic player. Each deck comes with a 60 card main deck and 15 card sideboard and is intended to be playable and competitive at a local level right out of the box. All cards will have been previously printed in standard and are standard legal. Wizards of the Coast will reveal the deck list at a later date, but for right now, mark your calendars for April 3rd, 2020, because that's when they will release four decks filled with cards from every standard legal set, including the new Theros Beyond Death cards. Do want to mention there is no MSRP info just yet. These Challenger decks normally 
will retail for about $19.95. I am sharing some images here. These are from this year's Challenger decks. So these are not what's going to be coming in 2020 because we don't even have a card list yet of what's in those decks. I have to I have to laugh because they you know they're presented as hey, you know, these are competitive decks, right? You know, right out of the box. Play it, you know, tournaments at your local game store on Friday night. Yeah, but there's still only four decks. If everybody's busting out these decks, you're gonna play the same decks against each other. So, I mean, I understand why Magic does it and makes life a little easier for people who don't know how to create a deck, how to build their competitive decks. And I'll be the first to point out, it's not as if I am the greatest deck builder for Magic either. But, uh, eh, you know, kind of fun. So, Flaming Huron's in chat. Kevin Thorpe is in chat as well. Good to see everybody popping in. William McGinnis. Almost missed William there. So, anyway, uh, I like Magic. I know people there. People get down on Magic, but I like it. I play online. I play I play Magic Arena. I don't play it a ton. Uh, every once in a while, I hop on there and play a little bit. And, of course, I never have, like, the newest cards or anything like that. So, I uh, I do all right. I think I'm, I'm about 50-50 as far as winning and losing. So, uh, Dan was asking, where's Kabuki Kid? And yes, I believe Flaming Huron is correct. I believe Kabuki Kid is off seeing Rise of Skywalker tonight. Uh, didn't Flaming Huron, I could have swore, was supposedly going to see that last night. So if that's the case, no spoilers here, but thumbs up or thumbs down, Flaming Huron. <laughs> Which one do you think? So, anyway, while uh, we're waiting for Flaming Huron to, to let us know if that's what uh, they were doing last night, uh, let's move on to the next news piece, because the Elder Scrolls Call to Arms Miniatures game is arriving next March. Here's the dope from Bethesda Softworks and Modifius Entertainment. It is the time of the Dragonborn. Battle rages across the forest, plains, and mountains of Skyrim as Imperials and Stormcloaks fight for supremacy. In ancient barrels, the restless dead rise from their sleep. Skeletons and fearsome drugger jealously guard their treasures from bands of delving adventurers. Elder Scrolls, a call to arms, is an adventure war game set in the world of Tamriel. Gather your heroes and venture, venture I should say, into drugger haunted tombs and ruins searching for treasure and glory, or fight the civil war as the Stormcloaks and Imperials battle for the future of Skyrim. These core rules contain all the rules that you need for exciting solo and cooperative delves or for two-player battles with AI adversaries hindering both players. Begin your adventures in Tamriel with the essential boxed set. It contains the full rules for the Elder Scrolls called Arms, plus the custom dice and tokens required. It will carry an MSRP of $45. Then, these are the releases that are going to be hitting as well. So we've got the Imperial Legion. Protect Tamriel and the Third Empire from your enemies with the staunch heroes of the Imperial Legion. Hadvar provides leadership and tactical expertise to the Legion troops and is supported by the Imperial Mage, whose expertise with magic and weapons makes her deadly at range and up close. Finally, three Imperial Swordsmen provide a stalwart backbone for your force. They will carry an MSRP of $33. Then we've got the Stormcloaks. Take back your homeland with the heroes of the Stormcloak Rebellion. The true sons of Skyrim are led by the terrifying Isarald, Thrice Pierced, and Raloff, who stocks the field with bow and axe. Both are supported by three hard-hitting Stormcloak soldiers with great swords. These also carry an MSRP of $33. Then we've got the Bleak Falls Barrow. Explore the world of Elder Scrolls as the, as the Hoverkin faces the Undead Keepers of Forgotten Tombs and Ruins. 
The Dragonborn delves into ancient Nord barrows and caves, equipped with her iconic weapons and armor. The Dragonborn is opposed by the deathless Dragger Warriors with great swords and creaking skeleton archers. These forces are led by one of the Dragonborn's most fearsome enemies, the Draugr Overlord, who jealously guards the secrets of his resting place. These miniatures will carry an MSRP of $36 for that set. Once again, the Elder Scrolls Call to Arms is going to arrive in March. So, these miniatures do look good. Everybody's pointing out, yeah, these uh, these look pretty good. Yeah, I agree. These look like really uh, decent sculpts. And uh, whoever they got on board to paint these, very nicely done. I believe these are 32 millimeter miniature, so it gives you a little more wiggle room with detail as far as that goes. I have to say the uh, the set that's got the uh, the skeletons and like the zombie creatures, those are pretty nice too. And you're getting quite a few miniatures for $33. So sweet. Uh, so who catches this quote? Donger needs food. So uh, the madman has joined us in chat, by the way. The donger needs food. Uh, 16 candles? For some reason, I think it's I think it's 16 candles. Uh, we'll find out. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, so I agree. These miniatures do look pretty cool. Uh, actually, they look a little more detailed than the Fallout minis. Some of the Fallouts were a little... Uh, little soft on the detail plus they were uh well okay not the sets you can buy separate the ones that came in the box were uh were like a plastic and they were kind of a soft plastic too so the madman says i got that quote correct there we go i haven't seen that movie Ooh, 30 years or so maybe more than 30 years i always liked that movie though i always thought that was a pretty funny movie all right so let's talk a little bit about video games because, well, PC games, to be precise. Because this week's free game from the Epic Game Store has arrived. And it's a real good one. Telling you that for a fact. I tell you this from knowledge. Because I've got the dope on Into the Breach from Subset Games. Defend the cities. Civilian buildings power your mechs. Defend them from the VEC and watch your fire. Perfect your strategy. All enemy attacks are telegraphed in minimalist, turn-based combat. Analyze your opponent's attack and come up with the perfect counter every turn. Build the ultimate mech. Find powerful new weapons and unique pilots as you battle the Vec infestation across corporate nation islands. Else get another chance because failure is not an option. When you're defeated, send help back through time to save another timeline. So I've got a real quick uh, launch video. This this game has been out for a little more than a year, I want to say. I am going to share the uh, quick. It's about a minute, a little more than a minute. So check this out. If you have not played Into the Breach, I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to pick this up. Let's take a peek. When? And of course, I didn't change the video. Thanks nice going, Jeff. <laughs> Knew there was something I was forgetting today knew there was something. All right, let me take care of that. When you have already experienced death, why have faith? If you accept that you... Let's take it from the top. Ah, it never fails. Not only is it uh, did I have to like switch the video out, of course, it turns out it's uh, a different size than the other video I had. Great. All right, so here we go. This is the correct video.
All right, so that is a look at Into the Breach. I have played the hell out of this game. Uh, I got it when it first came out, and it is a blast. It doesn't look like much, but when you start getting into it, it is super addictive. And it is, uh, it's kind of, it's almost like a puzzle. It's a little bit like a puzzle aspect of the game because each of the little, like, they're like giant monsters, right? So just play it off like Ultraman kind of thing, right? Or Spectra Man, either one of those. And uh, you, you've got the mechs and you're fighting these giant monsters. And these giant monsters will have specific moves that the different types make. Your mechs all have a specific move they're able to make uh, with their action points. Really, really great time. Really, really love this game. And right now, it is absolutely free from the Epic Game Store. Now, uh, uh, Flaming Heron's pointing out that they believe that there's going to be a free game at epicgames.com for the next 11 days as well. So a new game every day. I did not run across that. Uh, now, I'm not saying that's not the case, because I would not be shocked to see that, because Epic really is going all out to kind of stick it <laughs> stick it up steam, you know? So, uh, and they have been releasing some really good free games. We just had, uh, last week we had a wolf, uh, what, a wolf among us, which is awesome. Now we've got Into the Breach, which is only about a year old. So really, really good stuff. I will, uh, I will take a peek and see if it is true that we're going to see new games each and every day from Epic. And of course, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com because I always put news pieces up with links to everything to make life easier for you as well. So a great day is in chat with us too. Good to see that. So, uh, Bit of a discussion about miniatures going on and some of the companies that are selling pre-painted minis. As far as the pre-painted minis, I think, uh, I mean, in my opinion, I think, uh, I think WizKids probably does the nicest pre-paints out of all of them. So, anyway, moving right along, let's jump into some role-playing game news. In fact, you know what? Before I jump into the role-playing game news, uh, Grey Day's talking about that they haven't decided if they want to jump in on the City of Mist Kickstarter, which I believe ends today. It is for their starter set. It's like a beginner box, like we have seen with uh, quite a lot of companies as of late with uh, their beginner boxes. Uh, I have yet to actually shoot my City of Mist review for the box set. It's a very interesting system. I, I gotta say, I don't think it's for everyone. Especially the whole premise of the game is pretty unique. So if you're not buying into that that backstory in that in that setting, I don't I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so Great Aid mentions that that Kickstarter is going to end in about three hours. So I wish I could point in, you know, say yes, do it, or mm, maybe not. I will tell you this, Son of Oak does nice stuff. I mean, the uh, the books themselves are really, really nice. And uh, I did a, a page through for both books, both the um, MC's MC Toolkit, and I believe the other one's the Player's Guide is what they're called. So anyway, let's jump on into some role-playing game news because if you're a fan of Traveler, or at least a fan of the Mongoose Publishing flavor, of Traveler, because we know there are all different flavors of Traveler out there. But if you dig the Mongoose Publishing Traveler, you'll be happy to know the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society has made a return. Here's the dope. Welcome to the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society, your indispensable guide to adventuring in the far future. Each volume is a treasure trove of information and game editions for Traveler including adventures, new ships, alien creatures from across charted space, philosophical musings on the big empires, histories, different takes on familiar equipment, new vehicles, characters to be met in starports, playable alien races, and much, much more. 
amongst the many articles in Volume 1, you'll find First Lasers, the midway turret weapon between Pulse and Beam Lasers, guides to piracy and smuggling in these Spinward Marshes. New variants on the trusty ATV that will get you across any rough ground. The Delphinus Starliner to travel in absolute comfort. A look at the 2000 worlds of the Kikri, the Dynchia, fully playable humanoid aliens, as well as much more. This 128 page PDF is available at DriveThruRPG for $14.99. Sense. Nice. Very cool. Uh, I remember the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society way back in the day with Traveler, back when it was from GDW. And could have swore, isn't it? If I remember correctly, didn't the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society start from... Judges Guild? Was it a Judges Guild product? I don't remember. Flaming Huron is usually kind of our expert on, on like RPG history. Uh, Flaming Huron and Kabuki Kid, but like we all think, we're pretty sure Kabuki Kid's enjoying the uh, Rise of Skywalker right now. So, uh, for some reason, I, I want to say that it was Judges Guild. But, um, Maybe I'm wrong, but I do know some of the earliest stuff that Judges Guild did was Traveler. They did D&D, they did Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but they also did some Traveler stuff too. But uh, yeah, I remember the uh, uh, I remember the tra journal issues that were out there. Uh, you know, strangely enough, as Flaming Heron points out, Traveler's game that they always wanted to play. Uh, I always liked Traveler, but never actually played it or ran it. And I think part of the reason was that rules-wise, especially the, the old black box set, you know, that came with the three books, and then, you know, GDW released the other books as well, small, you know, digest size. Uh, I think part of it was because of how dryly presented everything was. The rules were very dry, even the adventures were very dry, very matter-of-factly presented. I think that might have might have done it. That might have been the reason why I never I got into you know Traveler. I think I played it once, way way back. I mean, once again, when it was the the black box rules from GDW. So uh, yes, William McGinnis is correct. Judges Guild did Rune Quest stuff. Yeah, Judges Guild did a lot of stuff. Judges Guild had tons of stuff that was out there. Uh, so did Mayfair. I don't know if people remember this. Let's jump out of here. So we're not just like stared at that Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society issue. Wish I had more images to share, but that was it. That's all I all I had. Uh, anyway, I was going to say that uh, Mayfair, when they first started off, same thing. They did a lot of licensed or approved uh advanced dungeons and dragons stuff they did a dc role-playing game that was actually very good uh surprisingly enough because most people think mayfair games are thinking board games but mayfair actually started off doing role-playing game products and mayfair was located in skokie illinois and okay now i'm gonna go off on a little tangent real quick Elliot Miller, my best friend, who, if you watch the show, you talk about all the time. He and I actually went to a Diamond Distributors party for comic store owners. I won't, I won't tell you how we got that. How we pulled that one off. But um, we went, and it, it was it was kind of like a like Diamond Distributor convention kind of thing, right? So they had all these, you know, comic companies and things like that. And Mayfair Games was there, and they threw a party one night. And uh, we went to the party, and it was, you know, all the free booze. And we, Elliot and I ended up dancing with a couple of employees from Mayfair who were actually very attractive young women, which, you know, 
We're talking back in the day when we were like 23. We didn't have a lot of women playing games. So uh so that was very, very uh very interesting. But that was that was back when they were doing the DC role-playing game and things like that as well. So uh so of gray days talking about they did mostly DC heroes, A D and D, and chill. I don't remember or if we're talking about Mayfair Games, I don't remember Mayfair Games doing chill stuff. Wasn't that Pace Setter? Wasn't Pace Setter the one who did chill? I don't know. Chill was not a, a horror role playing game. I remember we picked it up. We took a look at it. And it was we were just like This is just too too basic, too kiddie-ish. So uh yeah, we never got into chill. Yeah, so William McGinnis is like, ah, yes, the old roll aid stuff that wasn't authorized. That is correct. It was not authorized. Uh, was it eventually they got into that? Didn't roll aids eventually iron things out? I think they eventually iron things out with TSR. So anyway, yes, we're just going way back into the day. So uh, I will, I promise, I am going to put together a video and I'm going to talk about five role-playing games that I personally think deserve new additions. Some uh, some role-playing games that are long gone, but I think really deserve a comeback. Uh, also, talking about old uh, role-playing games, if you have not checked out um, Shannon Appleseen, I think it's Appleseen, the uh, designers in Drag... Or is it... Dragons, Designers and Dragons, I think it is. I'm almost positive it's called uh, Designers and Dragons. It is an excellent, it is an excellent series of, and it, it's like 70s is one book, 80s, 90s, and the aughts. Talking about uh, history role-playing games, and it's a blast. It was really, really well done. Uh, although, um, Mr. Appleseen tends to kind of recycle some certain grammatical phrases that kind of starts to irritate you after a while because like this is like the fifth time i've seen this phrase in this you know piece on whatever like say mayfair games but outside of that i think it's awesome i think it's very 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 well done so uh so a great day is asking star frontiers is star frontiers one of them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep that's one uh, and a few others that uh, people are going to be like, wow, I haven't thought of that game in a long time or maybe never even heard of it. So or even the companies that they come from. But uh, I think that will be out after Christmas. That'll be between between Christmas and New Year's. I'm going to have that video out. All right, let's get on to our last news piece, because talking about this is kind of weird how we kind of segue into Kevin Thorpe's talking about Bushido. Yeah, man, are you psychic? Because that's the other That's one of the other ones. It's Bushido. No joke. Bushido's one of them from FGU. Uh, in fact, there's one other FGU game that I, I think deserves a uh, a new paint, like new uh, coat of paint and stuff like that. So let's see if uh, somebody out there guesses what's going on with that. All right. Anyway, I, I was going to say, it's kind of funny. We're talking about like old RPGs in that. And that kind of segues into my last news piece because the newest edition, I believe this is the fifth edition, I might be wrong, of Chivalry and Sorcery is now available in PDF from Britannia Game Designs. I've got the dope. For those who fight and those who pray, for those who toil and those who enchant, Chivalry and Sorcery, the medieval role-playing game. With all the medieval flavor that was loved by Earl, uh, fans of earlier editions, is the game is now back. See, for some strange reason, this, this first like paragraph of their sell sheet info is weird. This truly is the definitive edition of Chivalry and Sorcery. Players can create well-rounded characters who really feel like they belong to their world. Knights wield secular power and command the battlefield, 
while other warriors strive to win their spurs in combat and rise to join their ranks. Magic is deep and mysterious, drawing on real-world historical detail, while priests utter prayers and call upon the very miracles of their gods. You decide the level of magic and fantasy for your game. Run a medieval high fantasy game filled with magic, miracles, and myth, or one of gritty, low fantasy, or even pure historical simulation. How do you know he's the king? He doesn't have shit all over him. I know you guys are going to jump right on that reference. The choice is yours. From fairy tale romance to courtly love, from religious intrigue to brutal, bloody battle, chivalry and sorcery lets you play in just the Middle Ages you want. It includes over 30 vocations to follow. You can follow Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. It includes 200 skills, more than 200 skills, and over 300 spells and acts of faith. The PDF contains extensive internal hyperlinks from chapter content and index tabs to every page number in the contents and index, and the consolidated skills and spells list have each entry also hyperlinked. The 600-page PDF is available right now from DriveThruRPG for $30. The hardcore book is slated for a Q1 2020 release. It is going to carry an MSRP of $75. So I have heard conflicting reports of when the core book, the physical book, is going to arrive. Now, I have heard January, so some online retailers are indicating that it's January. But then again, this was kickstarted, and I did see an update from the Kickstarter from, I think, December 6th, saying the book had been sent to the printers. So I don't think there's any way this book goes to the printers like on December 6th, and it's in stores in January. I don't think that's going to happen. I have heard some other folks saying that um, I guess some some rumors are it's uh, a March release. But yeah, 600 pages. That is that is a tome, ladies and gents. That is certainly a tome. But so Kevin Thorpe is like, whoa, that is old school. So uh, I'm assuming Kevin is talking about uh, chivalry and sorcery, not Bushido. But uh, as we were talking about, so here's what I've always heard of chivalry and sorcery. Now, I think way back in the day, because I think I think the game came out in 77 ish, 77, 78. So that's a little just a touch before I uh, kind of got into D&D. &D. Uh, or actually, maybe that's right about the time I got into D&D. Because I, I started, I, want, I, I always forget if I started playing Dungeons and Dragons in sixth grade or if it was seventh grade. And funny enough, my brother, I have an older brother, he's two and a half years older than I am. Uh, if you watch the show, I mentioned Greg once in a while. But uh, he actually started playing D&D &D when he was in eighth grade. And, uh, he played it a little bit and that was it. And my brother was never really much of a gamer. He plays games now with uh, the rest of the gang. But uh, no, he wasn't like when I was in high school, I was a big gamer. Anyway, but uh, I had always heard that chivalry and sorcery make makes advanced Dungeons and Dragons look like rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> so it is supposed to be super, super crunchy. That's what I've always heard. I do believe, I could have swore I remember seeing maybe like the first edition core book. Maybe the first edition rule book. Maybe I saw a, a, a release for it. And, you know, I, I'm i from back in the day when we, we, you know, had Avalon Hill games with 50 page rule books that we didn't blink. We were like, oh yeah, okay. Dive on in. Uh, and even I was kind of like, when I saw Chivalry and Sorcery, I was like. But then again, I have also heard that if you are looking for a medieval themed role playing game, you look no further than that. Even if you're just going to steal material for your own games. 
All right. So, uh, yes, Kevin Thorpe says the Holy Grail. So everyone I knew who played this moved to Harn World. That's interesting. Yes, from Columbia Games. I have the second and third editions of Harn World that um, Grant Dalglish gave me. And I gotta be honest, I mean, it's really cool, but it's just a little too... For my taste. I'm not saying for anybody else, just for my taste. It's just a little too heavy lifting-ish. I mean, it's very cool. It's a very realistic setting. But then again, I think part of it too is I don't have any other reference materials. I just have kind of the, like the info dump setting book. So I've got the second, I think it's second edition, which is like an actual book. Then I've got the third edition, which actually goes into a binder, which of course I didn't have a binder to put it in. So anyway, so uh, let's see what we got here in chat. So William McGinnis says, always preferred Pendragon to uh, C&C, Castles and Crusades. Now that's another game I think people mix up with um, Chivalry and Sorcery is Castles and Crusades. I think Castles and Crusades is another kind of crunchy, uh, I don't want to call it a retro clone because it's been out for a long time, but I think it's also a, a pretty crunchy uh, system as well. So... Anyway, everybody seems like Harn World. Yeah, you know what? I was reading through and I thought, yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, but like I said, it just, I don't necessarily, when I'm first learning about like a setting, I don't need to know like every, what the days of the week are called and how many hours are in each day and how many days are in a week and different weeks are called this and the different season. I don't need that like the first thing I'm reading. I want to, you know, Get some background before I even get into those kind of details. Uh, Empire of the Petal Throne. Yes. Um, uh, Mars Barker. So that is a game I've never seen. I've never actually looked at. All right. So we're chatting a little bit. We got things going. Uh, so uh, that's pretty funny. Kevin Thorpe guessed two of the five role-playing games I'm going to talk about. Uh, one that is people might think, because I have mentioned this in the past, Granted, we are 414 episodes into the Daily Dope, so I think I mentioned it like twice, maybe three times on a show uh, that you might think, I would say, uh, Morrow Project or The Morrow Project. But that is not the case because there is a recent edition of The Morrow Project that came out, I think like three years ago, four years ago. So that's recent enough where I'm like, nah, that doesn't need a new, new, uh, new edition. All right, so uh, a couple of things that I wanted to mention uh, in the mailbag. Got a couple of emails uh, that uh, I'm getting around to actually. Oh, there we go. A gray day, got it. Aftermath. Yeah, okay, so you guys got three of the five. I'm not saying anything else, because then there won't be any reason for you to actually watch the video. <laughs> good work, everybody in chat. Very good. Huh, Sherlock Holmes got nothing on you guys. Anyway, so uh, somebody asked me, uh, why do I not talk about like controversial topics as far as like pop culture and things that are going on like on Twitter and things, you know, along those lines. And um, I, to be honest, I mean, I think at the end of the day, I mean, I'm not talking politics and stuff like because No, I'm not getting into that. Uh, so because I'm, I'm sure my politics are quite a bit different than are uh, the wargaming crowd that follows the show. But uh, anyway, I certainly would not get into that. But uh, they're kind of curious, why don't I tackle stuff like... I guess I would get... Uh, an example would be like the thing going on right now today with J.K. Rowling. Uh, and it, to me, it's sort of like, I think people know what I'm about as far as, you know, socially... And I'm, and I'm all big in inclusion and diversity. And I, I, but on the other side, I'm also not one of these people who are like, oh yeah, this is all a huge problem. I, I don't believe in this whole, you know, younger kids out there thinking, well, we're going to solve this problem that actually really didn't exist kind of thing. But uh, at the end of the day, most of the time, the stuff that's like people are all worked up on Twitter about, 
I don't give a shit. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. In the great scheme of life, it doesn't matter. I, I would rather sit here and talk about, hey, you know what? Be good to each other. Be nice. Invite people that you may not invite to your table normally to sit down, play a game. Celebrate your differences and stuff like that as opposed to, you know, using those differences to tear us apart. As opposed to sitting there going, well, you know, if you stand this... It's another thing I don't I don't like these days is... What, are we just throwing the English language away? Is it because everybody wants to text stuff and tweet stuff? It's like, yeah, stand this. It's like, what the fuck is that? It's not even a word. It's like, let's just make up words now. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so I, to me... I'm not here to, like, get people bent out of shape. <laughs> there are enough people who just don't like this show and me, personally, anyway. I don't need to be sitting every year like, okay, well, let me be controversial for everybody out there. <laughs> PewDiePie's got nothing on me. No. All right, so anyway, other thing, a little more, a little more entertaining. Uh, so everybody's like, yeah, kind of like, yeah. Flaming Heron says, thanks for the positivity. Yeah, you know, and people think that, you know, I just, like, crank sometimes. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I don't think so. I'm, I'm a pretty, yeah, I'm, I'm usually laugh. Even when I say, you know, I'm a little ticked off about something, I usually say it with a smile and a laugh. Anyway, so, uh, other thing is, someone had asked if I had any guilty pleasures as far as movies and television shows or music or books, you know, things that, you know, people would not think that I am into. And I thought, okay, well, yeah, just for laughs, I'll share one. So I happen to like Outlander, <laughs> not the books. I've never read the books, but, uh, the show, I think it's a pretty damn good show. Uh, you know, and you know the romance part of it. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it's all right. I like the I like the historical aspect of it. I like the uh, the time travel aspect of it. I like the fact that uh, the main character Claire, even though she comes from the future, she doesn't have all the answers. She doesn't know everything, right? Just because things that are going on uh, are, are basically her history, she doesn't know like everything which i I, de I definitely like that i definitely do do dig that and uh i'm sure people would be like really jeff you watch outlander serious or do you watch the hallmark channel too jeff it's like no no i don't but anyway so uh see i just thought i'd share that yeah if you have not checked out outlander it is on netflix uh first three seasons are on netflix the fourth season, I, the way Netflix works is usually they have to wait until a new season is about to premiere before they release the next season. So uh, I think after I think after the first of the year is the fifth season of it. But uh, definitely check it out. It is uh, it's very interesting. I was very surprised. I had a friend of mine. She had said, "Oh, I think you'll like this," and I'm thinking, "Yeah, okay." And sure enough, I was like, wow, you're right. This is kind of cool. Okay, so uh, so there is some discussion about Wolf and Cub. There we go. Very cool. Uh, I have not seen Wolf and Cub, man, in a long time. So, and there is uh, some discussion of a, a uh, movie based on the manga. So that's cool. Very cool. Anywho, all right, so uh, that is it for tonight's show. I usually, lately I try to do about 45 minutes. So also, something I do want to quickly mention, might see the video quality a little bit sharper, just a touch, uh, because I have up the uh, kilobits per second, and uh, kind of experimented a little bit so that uh, it wasn't too high, which kind of craps out. The system and kind of craps out the stream so hopefully things are a little bit sharper and i have no idea why it always looks like i didn't shave here i say it drives me nuts i notice it every once in a while when i'm like i'll check to make sure oh, okay let's see how the stream went does it look all right 
And it looks like I, I've got like stubble here. It's like, it's just the way the, the light catches the tiny, tiny little stubbles here. It's like, wow, that looks gross. <laughs> anyway. All right. So other thing I do want to mention, because I will not have a show tomorrow. As I mentioned before, no show tomorrow night. I will be off watching Rise of Skywalker. So, and I will see if, uh, if Flaming Huron's right. It's good, but they can see why people will hate it. There's haters everywhere. Everybody, everybody's got a bitch about something. Uh, anyway, so do want to wish those out there watching live or on Memorex uh, a very happy Hanukkah. Because I know Hanukkah begins tomorrow. So uh wanted to make sure to wish folks a very happy Hanukkah. I will be back on Monday. I'll mention that again. So... Anyhow, that's going to wrap up tonight's show. As I always like to point out, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And if you do, don't forget, ring that little bell. Because it will not only notify you when this stream goes live, in about a minute of it starting, it will also tell you when my standalone videos get uploaded. And there will be quite a few of those. Because even though I'm not doing too many shows next week, maybe only one which is next Monday, there are going to be videos popping up too. So I'm going to have some first looks, going to have some unboxings, got some reviews as well. Those out there who uh, are kind of curious about the new Osprey games, role-playing games, I am going to have a review of Paleomythic. So you may want to check that out. It is pretty interesting. So do want to mention that? <laughs> so Viper Tape's like, what? No show! Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, if you're curious, so Tuesday's Christmas Eve, and I spend that with my family. Wednesday, of course, is Christmas. Thursday's day after Christmas. I'm probably going to be hungover. Maybe. I don't know. Also, there might be uh, a day of gaming with my best friend Elliot Miller and his son is coming in from California. It's either going to be Thursday or Friday. So if it turns out to be on Thursday, then I will do a show on Friday. If it's on Friday, nope, we will be doing a day of gaming. Anyway, of course, as I was saying, be sure to subscribe, ring that little bell, so on and so forth. Of course, when you are not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek out at thegaminggang.com. For those of you who joined me in chat, thank you very much. And for you psychics out there who figured out three of those five RPGs I'm going to be talking about, congratulations, nicely done. And of course, if you watch after the fact, if you watch on Memorex, I appreciate everyone who watches, regardless if you're hanging out live, keeping me company, or if you have to catch the show a couple days later. Very nice. Thank you very much. All right, so everybody enjoy your weekend. Have a great Friday night. Very safe weekend as well. I will be back on Monday. There will be some videos popping up over the weekend as well, so keep your eyes peeled. But we have a great weekend. I'll be back Monday. And of course, until then, happy trails. Whoa, hey. <laughs> I didn't realize that you were still here. Well, if that's the case, then allow me to share the following information with you that I only have 20 seconds to do. So let's all take a deep breath. <sighs> so if you would like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, please click right here. If you want to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, click right here. And if you'd like to check out a randomly selected standalone video, by all means, click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and thanks for watching.